afternoon to celebrate the life of our dear brother Pete we are happy that we can be that we are alive and we can do it but before we do some songs I would kindly ask you to stand so that we can pray and sing some songs okay let us pray merciful father we are so grateful to be your children to be alive, that we can come in your presence to pay our last tribute to Brother Keith. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would wash us in your blood, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and as we open our mouths to give you the praise that you alone deserve, we pray that you will bless us for Christ's sake. Amen. Be seated everywhere. The first song we're going to sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, 462, in the church hymnal, 462. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hair of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. Oh, dear. 
dirty love, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, numbers on my side, angels descending, ring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of Twenty-two, marching to Zion. Come, we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known.
116, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let's sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall song and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll. resurrection share when the chosen one shall gather to the home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll when the roll is called up yonder 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 I'll be Talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then, when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. I kindly ask the congregation to stand, please. Meanwhile, let us just sing, this is the day. This is the day, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord change in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written that is swallowed up in victory. O that, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, or my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I invite us now to bow your heads as we have prayer. 
eternal Father and our God. This evening we stand in your presence in a solemn experience for our departed loved one, Brother Keith. We invite you, God, to come by here and comfort all of us. Keith was a dear one to everyone, one that has been loved by all, one that was able to turn our sorrow into joy, one that could have always changed the mood to one of happiness. And even now, God, we pray as we commence this service that you bring comfort and peace to all of us, but especially to the close family members. Give them the strength to go through this experience with one understanding, God, that there is a resurrection. And we pray, God, that Brother Keith, would have made his part right. Yeah. And the onus is upon all of us now to make it right, so that on that glad day, we will all have the joy of coming together once more. Oh God, fill us with that Holy Ghost presence and power even now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. I stand this afternoon to bring some opening remarks. Truly on behalf of the entire family, we want to welcome you. You have chosen to be here to show your respect, to reflect, to celebrate the life of Brother Keith Osmond and to show your support to bring hope and encouragement by your presence and by your interaction today with the family. Just want to also inform you that if you need to, to use the public facilities of the church, you just need to use the exit and walk straight down you take a, a right turn and then another right turn and you will find uh, the public facilities we really want to know that even those online we want to know that this service is mixed because as the Apostle Paul says, we don't weep as those who don't have hope. We weep as those who have hope. So that weeping is a mixture of comfort and assurance that we find in Jesus Christ. So may we, as we continue this service, may we know that our dear brother, would have lived for Christ even though we all know him as one who would have helped us to enjoy the moment even more with his humor we know he was a serious man behind all that because he chose the Lord amen and so at this time we will continue with the hymn of continuation hymn number 434 we speak of the realms. Stand, please. Let's sing. We speak of the realms of the blessed, the countries so bright and so fair, and all for its glories. Sorrow, death. 
At this time, we'll be favored with an item of special music by Sister Michelle Osborne. Is Sister Michelle here? All right. Doesn't seem as if Sister Michelle is here, so we'll continue. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 14. Verses 1 to 3. If you know it, you could say it along with me. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. <clears throat> you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also I take this time to extend condolence to the family and the friends of our beloved Keith Osman it's never an easy experience having to part with a loved one and even harder is learning to live life after you'd have gone through the service as we have it here today. But I just want to encourage all of you to take it one step at a time, remembering always that with God, all things are still possible. And as challenging as the journey may appear ahead, one step, one step, one step and we will make it by the grace of God. You know, when you have a big family, and many siblings, it's a beautiful thing when they are growing up because the house always has a lot of energy, a lot of things happening. But the flip side of that is that when there is a loss, the grief is big as well because there are many siblings, many cousins, nieces, and nephews, many other relatives and in-laws that are grieving at the same time. So on behalf of my family and the Scarborough Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Markey Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church, I'd like to extend condolence to all those that are grieving today, and we pray that God will continue to strengthen you. Sister Bernadette, Sister Lina, you know, and all the other siblings, take one step at a time. And with the help of God, you will be able to arrive at your destination's end. We continue at this time with a tribute by Divine Solace Funeral Home, after which we will open the floor to accept a few tri tributes from you in the audience, perhaps two or three, before we press on to the other aspects of the service. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Good afternoon to everyone present here today. Special salutation to the family, friends, loved ones, well-wishers of the deceased. My name is Diane Devins Emtage, and I'm your funeral director today from Divine Solace Funeral Home, which is located in Prince Britain Hill, Roxborough, Tobago. On behalf of the management and staff of Divine Solace Funeral Home, we would like to extend our sincerest sympathy to you all, and I pray that in your time of grief that the Lord will grant you divine comfort to carry you through. We at Divine Solace Funeral Home, we try to live, live with the um, living, a consolation of your loved ones so that in the end, the memory that we leave with you here today will last for a lifetime. I thank you for choosing Divine Solace Funeral Home to help honor the life of your loved ones. I pray that your hearts are pleased. 
I thank you. We now have a tri short tribute by Divine Sons Funeral Home. Because we heard that the deceased love his guitar, we'll have a guitar tribute to you all. Thank you. beautiful tribute we are thankful let's put our hands together again all right so I noticed that perhaps half of palliative year is in good news this afternoon and I know somebody may want to say something so we're gonna take the tributes I right, one just come right ahead we have space for two more Two, all right. Good evening, everybody. Come on, that is not kids. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Wake up, hello. Come now, man, you know Keith, uh, Keith was vibrant. He was an old layback man. Smiling for no reason. 
Keith was happy for no reason at all. Keith, what are you smiling at? I don't know. <laughs> Usually, when I go to funerals, I'm always prepared. I always have the best song to sing. But you see, when it hit home, I actually have no song to sing today. Keith, Keith was Keith. Keith would call me for no reason. Keith, what you calling me for? So why you give me your number? <laughs> Keith, do you want something? No. Well, leave me alone now. Go down and sleep, boy. Rest me. Ring back. What you want? You tell me to leave you alone, and I'm afraid to leave you alone right now. Keith was just Keith. Keith was a darling. And if anybody's sitting here right now and say, Keith treated you in a bad way, you're wicked. You're wicked. You know what? Play G for me. Play G. <laughs> you know Keith loved music, but the music didn't love him. <laughs> Cause when peace is like a river hurt that my way when sorrow like seas below. And whatever my light and thou hast got me to say it is well it is well with my soul. Say, it is well. Sing with me. We can sing together. When my soul, it is well. It is well with my soul. My sins, <laughs> oh, the joy, come on, of this glorious day. My sins, not in part, but the whole world. <laughs> you know why? Because it's nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Say so praise the Lord. Come on. Say so praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And it is well with my It is his will, it is will with my soul. Take it away, so don't sing. Say it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. 
song from the heart it is well who will be next we have space for two more all right one here chair and the last one right come closer sure pleasant evening to everyone i am susan otley ali and on the behalf of my family i extend condolences to all the family involved now, I'm hearing everybody saying, Keith, Keith. He was my good friend, but I never knew him as Keith, you know. <laughs> I gave him my own name. I call him Busy. That man was always busy. Always busy. Now, when I moved, when I moved to where I'm living presently, it was a very bushy area. And he came and was brush cutting my yard. Busy, busy, before I say, Jack Robinson, he was finished cutting the yard. He said to me one day, I'm going to give you a coconut to plant and a banana sucker. I said, all right, no problem, thank you. He brought the coconut. He said, sit down and plant it. I said, okay. I sat down on the ground, you know, plant the coconut tree. So when I sit down, you go short. I said, all right. When I plant the coconut tree, taller than that, <laughs> if you see height a tree, for today, the coconut's still tall, you know, but watch me, not them big so. Real big. The banana, he said, you're going to get ten hand. Ten. Nine hand and ten toes. I said, okay. <laughs> when the banana tree bear, two scrawny little hand. I said, but what is wrong with this man? <laughs> when he came back to my home, <laughs> I said, busy, come. I said, come. I said, look at the coconut tree. But he started to laugh. He said he didn't sit down properly. I said, what you mean? I said, what you mean? And I said, I said, watch. Look the banana tree there. The man started to laugh. He only laughing. I said, busy, you're I said, you're a good one. Now my children, he loved them. And I could not understand why. He called my last daughter Honey. Well, I used to call her Honey. And he always he took up the habit of calling her Honey. But when I saw who his children were, I realized why he was so drawn to them. Because Sam, his daughter, who worked with me, I realized that the kind of blood, they had the same kind of, a, you know, the kind of, a, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so I really thank God for the person he was to me. Really genuine. Really, really genuine. And, you know, all of us grieve in different ways. When I saw my friends singing there, I said, wow. I know the girl is a vibrant person, nobody could break her, but we understand why. I also am grieving because it was only Saturday I lost my aunt. But I said, God, I thank you for the life she would have lived, you know, and I'm praying, God, that I live the life that counts. Okay, I'm going to try to do a verse of a song to comfort all of us, to comfort all of us. <clears throat> You may be down and feel that God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can get through. Right now it seems I'm gonna change that it's a bit too flat. <clears throat> Sorry. You, you may be done and feel that God 
I somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can get through. Right now it seems there's no way out and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again He'll take care of you And He'll do it again Oh, He'll do it again If you just take a look at where you God knows the things that we're going through And He knows that we're hurting You see, He knows just how our hearts Has been broken in two But He's the God of the stars, the sun and the sea And He is a Father tribute about Keith is a very different story to what you have heard before. My tribute has to do with playing sports, cricket, with Keith. And if you were lucky enough to, I say lucky enough to experience his bowling, he was one of the quickest, or I should say the quickest fast bowler that I have seen at his age. I was a batsman, but not very good. But I used to try. But not everything people tell you to do, you run and do it. You have to think. There were teams in school playing sports, and you didn't have the fight and what you have in the schools today. It was really a love among students. And those fellows on my team, encouraged me to go and try to hit Keith for six. I didn't think, I said yes, well, the first ball that Keith bowled landed straight on my forehead. <laughs> it was about midday, but I didn't see the sun. I saw stars, moon, and many other planets which I couldn't explain. I did hit him for six after and a four. But the pain in my forehead won the better of the game. I had was to retire hurt. And you know, uh, it was much unfortunate that had there been opportunities in Tobago at that time, 
that some of our young sportsmen and women that fell by the way, uh, they would have reached, it was quite possible that Keith particularly could have reached the international standard of cricket. And may I say here a bit of the record. His performance gave hope to all young bowlers who saw him bowl. And may I say here, off the record, that in the 1963-64 cricket season here in Tobago, that a Tobago one day side, made up of Tobagonians, Tobagonians, beat Australia test side in a one day match in Shaw Park. You can research it, you can Google it. An Australia test side, the big giant Australia, the giant and the king of the world of cricket, they were beaten by a Tobago side in Shaw Park in a one day match in the 1963 64 cricket season. And throughout the whole time of schooling and even after school, I will reach him. Not long ago, about a couple of days before he died, I saw him. I said, Listen, that court ball hit me in my forehead. I still remember it. Eh? So I have something soaking for you. And we always made a joke of it, you know? So I want to say that his life was never a sad one. Wherever you meet Keith, if you have a problem, that problem has to find somewhere to go. Keith is going to cause that problem to move. I remember he was talking to a girl. You know, you're always talking to somebody. And he said, um, the, the, the girl answered him. I didn't hear what she said. And he said, so I can live in hope now. And the woman didn't answer. And, and the kid said, well, if I can't hip, live in hope, I will move a little further down to Jandaya. <laughs> so this is how I remember him. And he was a good colleague. <laughs> he was a good colleague, an excellent young cricketer. And I give condolences on behalf of my family and I to his family that he left behind. And I say, may he rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. Okay, we'll have our last at this time. Good afternoon, church. I want to extend condolences to the Osman family, the children of the deceased. May God comfort your heart at this time of your loss. I'll do my tribute in song. I have journeyed through the long dead night out on the open sea by faith. Sails are told 
winter storm. Oh, soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Oh, soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Yeah. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. King, oh, 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 no more crying, hey, for he has got to meet the king, yeah. No more crying, hey, he has got to meet the king, oh, no more crying, hey, he has got to meet the king. Hallelujah indeed. We are going to see the King. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to also add a few words of condolence and sympathy on behalf of the Lambo Seventh Adventist Church, a church that we can say we know the family. They would have come to the Lambo Church for their family reunion, Thanksgiving Sabbath. And we heard their voices. Uh, I can remember visiting home by his sister, a member of the Lambo Church, Sister Lena. And uh, I, I like to crack jokes, but I never try to compete with him. Uh, he will always put you in the shade. And I truly want to express to the entire family, each one of you, even online, on behalf of the the entire membership of the Lambo Seventh-day Adventist Church, we do express our deepest condolences to each one of you. As we continue this celebration, we want to go into worshiping the Lord with giving an offering. This offering will be used for the Good News Seventh-day Adventist Church to continue to reach out in love to the less fortunate with a lunch every Monday and Wednesday. On, on Fridays, a soup. We also give out food baskets. We also give out clothing and shoes. And so to continue this work, we ask you to, to give a helping hand through this offering. And does ensure that we can continue to do this every month, every year, as we continue to help those who are less fortunate around us. So at this time, we will invite our chorister to lead us in the singing of an appropriate hymn as the offering is collected to continue the humanitarian work of the Good News SDA Church. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy. 
worthy for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yes he is good we have had some beautiful snapshots from Keith's life thus far. At this time, we will have some more with the eulogy by Wilson Osman. Wilton Osman. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to first thank all of the relatives, friends, and attendees who have come here today to honor this great man, a local and international icon in his own rights. With Keith, you never know what to expect, and so today, please allow us the liberty to do this eulogy Keith style, spontaneous, genuine, and never know what to expect. Keith Wilman Osman. So as I said, you never know what to expect. So we'll have a eulogy done that was written by his nephew, Ken, and Kristen Mapp. His nephew, sorry, and niece, Ken, and Kristen Mapp. The, f the flowers bloom today with sadness because someone who once cared for them is gone. The consummate man of the earth, the man who was so down to the earth, he was comfortable with dirt. This man we can uh, describe as a legend, a legend of a love man, a legend of a family man, a legend of a wonderful soul, a legend of a father, a legend of a son, a legend of an uncle, a legend of his, in his own right. Keith was born on the 26th April 1957 at Scarborough General Hospital. No doubt he was a bouncing, handsome sus baby boy to Hilda Osmond and Abraham Osmond. He attended the party where Angelican School, despite his 
untimely passing, he lived a full life. The psalmist David tells us the number of our days is three score and ten. If, and if by reason of the strength it may be four score, well, he didn't reach the reasoning years because he compressed his living into the time that God gave him. He lived a full, full life. Keith was never one to multiply words, so this eulogy will be just like he was. Keith was too, always full of humor and delight. He was the epitome of the life of the party. He almost danced his way through life with Heinz's mischievous smile. He would always meet people and make them smile with some nice comment or other cute mira remark. We say Keith was a legend indeed. Let me summarize in this poem. Keith was a selfless, caring, fun-loving man. I know you know what I mean and understand. He was the father of two children, Samantha and Lisa Ashley, children he loved forever and endlessly. He was born in 1957 and died the 30th November 2023. His life will never be forgotten. A legend was he. He was full of singing and dancing. A guitar and piano he lived to ping. He would always fill the room with laughter at jokes. He was a master. He was a comedian in his own right, always leaning to the light. He was a father to all, helping us where we fall. He worked at the Botanic Gardens. As a worker, he stood tall, doing work with his bare hands. We all know he was a mighty handsome man. He had a way of rejoicing in everything, whether tree cutting or waka using. He was a man who was a gardener and a fisherman too, a fish seller and mechanic too. He was the man you could call upon wherever life had its need. He was a great friend and a true family man indeed. His brother, rest in peace, Wilton. I mean. Um, we are kindly asking the driver of PAZ 2432 to remove your vehicle. PAZ 2432. Okay, um, now I'll read what, um, this was more coined by Sunil Barton, and I would have contributed just a little, so we'll hear about Keith from that perspective. All of us have known him in a variety of roles. Father, husband, uncle, cousin, grandpa, mentor, and great friend. I have been privileged to know him as my uncle, and in his presence, there was never a dull moment. Keith Usman is known as a legend all throughout Tobago. A kind, gentle, miserable, but loving soul that left a lasting impression upon anyone that came into contact with him. Can we testify? Yeah. To his children, he was a father with a different touch a father that they could depend on, a father that provided not just sustainability, but most importantly, love and guidance. To his nephews and nieces, he was not just an uncle, but a friend, a partner that you could chill with and talk to about anything, an uncle that will leave his business undone and tend to ours. To his siblings, he was the brother that you can call at any time, whether it was to take you to Trinidad or to any event that you wish to attend. To his co-workers and friends, he was the one that would make the job worthwhile going to. To his many customers in terms of his landscaping business, he was the guy that would do an excellent job at a very reasonable cost. To him, 
it was not just about the money. It was about bringing satisfaction to his customers. For us as a family, members, we have so many joyous memories of this man known as Keith, Lucky Joe, Chow Wow, and many other names that would gain base that would have been coined based on his many escapades. One such escapades that Sunil could recall would see Keith heading into Roxborough in a haze that caused his front tires to catch a fire, prompting him to drive straight into the river. Who would do that? Only Uncle Keith. That was another episode while driving where the gear lever of his car came out completely into his hand. What you think Keith will do? And with little fuss, he just casually slipped it back in place and continued driving. Only Keith. Let us just say, he had a way with cars. He always found a way to make them work. Keith loved living life. In fact, he loved living life in the fast lane. He believed that his car was the fastest in the world and that driving from Scarborough to Palatine Bay and Bloody Bay should take no more than five minutes. His love for his family was indeed notable. He would give his last to his family and remain without. What a legend. His favorite line was, somebody could say, I don't know how to say it, how Keith would have said it, but money isn't any to everything. You all remember him saying that? Money isn't everything. It is indeed a sad day for us. The fact remains that he, or the fact remains that had we been at someone else's funeral today, Keith would have been the one to cheer us up and make us laugh and help to comfort us. I deposit to you today that if we should look into any known dictionary, well-known dictionary or in today's world, should we search Google for the definition of the life of the party, we would no doubt come across the name and picture of our dear beloved Keith Osman. So today we celebrate the life of a legend so yes, we are sad, but we are not hopeless. We have the blessed hope that one fateful day we will see again upon the sea of glass. Until then, rest easy, legend, rest easy. Um, Uncle Keith, well, I don't know, I don't think there's music. I don't know if the musicians could play it, but um, we partied so much last night. I think that is why Uncle Wilton lost his voice. But he was really my beloved uncle, and I would like to pay tribute to him. Um, I don't know if you know. Four days late, if you give me a chord, and we'll try something. <laughs> came to Jesus please come fast Lazarus is sick and without your help he would not last Mary and Martha watch their brother die they waited for Jesus, and he did not come, and they wondered why. The dead watch was over, and buried four days. And somebody said, he'll soon be here, the Lord's on his way. to him and then she cried Lord if you had been here you could have healed him he'd still be a 
When he's four days late, he's still on time. And Jesus said, Martha, now show me the grave. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there for days. The gravestone was rolled back. Oh, and then Jesus cried. Somebody cried. I'll take it again. But Jesus said, My heart. Show me the grave. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there for days. The gray stone was rolled back. Then Jesus would cry. Lazarus come forth. Then somebody said, He's alive. He's alive. You may be fighting, we may be fighting a battle of fear. We cry to the Lord, we need you now, Lord, but you have not appeared. Let's not be discouraged. Cause he still the same. He'll roll back that grave and he'll soon be here and he'll call out his name. But you're four days late and all hope is gone. And Lord, That he's four days late, but he's still on time. And our God is great, though four days late, he's still on Okay, with truly beautiful singing. Thank God for the eulogy that was just brought before this, that special item music. We asked Mr. Walter, uh, your vehicle is uh, blocking someone that needs to move uh, immediately. Mr. Walter, please attend to your vehicle at this time. We are getting ready for the, the sermon. The spoken word and uh, I believe everything that has been uh, said so far is to prepare us uh, to hear that message from a relative of the family uh, the Edwards uh, uh, even past the Earl Edwards the past of the Far East District of the Tobago Conference and so as he gets ready to share that special message from the the Word of God we invite Sister Lucretia 
Williams uh, to please come forward and share with us a special, special item of music as we meditate and prepare our hearts for the spoken word. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call and at the midnight cry will be going On a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ will rise to meet him in the air, and then those that remain. The midnight cry will be going home. I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilling. The signs of the time, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he said, Son, go get my children. At the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise when my Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ will rise to meet him in the air. And then those dream pain will be quickly changed in a moment. And at the midnight cry We'll be going home When my Jesus steps out On a cloud to call his children 
the dead in Christ, they shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain will be quickly changed in a moment and at the midnight cry and at the midnight cry and at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again Good afternoon, family and friends. I think that's different. And to all God's wonderful people. And even those who are viewing us on the World Wide Web. I too would like to offer my sincerest condolences to the family, relatives and friends of the deceased Keith Osmond. Keith was a fun-loving person, carefree, person who can do anything. We call them magicians. Keith, you never know what to expect. So when you see him, you have to prepare. And about two, a month or and a half ago, he met me in the bank and he said, Eddie, I don't have to draw in the line again. And I say, well, since I've seen you, I don't have to join it either. <laughs> uh, but he didn't follow up. The young lady says he smiles for nothing, but I said he smiled because he was happy. Not miserable, just mischievous. Ain't it? Comfortable with the dirt. And that same dirt will return him to this afternoon. Because he was comfortable with the dirt. So I offer condolences to the family, relatives, and, and friends to Alicia and Samantha and the seven grandchildren and to the 11 siblings. Big family. I want to assure you that we serve a God who loves you and will take good care of you in this time of bereavement and beyond. For the last three weeks I've known and have been involved in at least four funerals. And I was one, at one yesterday in Bethel, and I'm doing this one today. Have one on Thursday, and two next week. But I also have four weddings that will help to balance that off. Pastors, it would seem that for the last two years, we would have had a funeral every week. I'm sure I'm not exaggerating. When would all this end? I want to show you that it will end when Jesus comes again. Yeah. When he steps out and call his children. And those of us who are alive, I, I, I'm not hoping to be alive. I want, I want when he steps out to call me. He'll take us home. 
So I extend my deepest condolences to the Osmonds family relatives of which I'm a part. Family, I want to show you that God loves you and will take good care of you. I want to remind you that God has perfect timing. The songs we heard this evening testify to that. Never early, never late. Sometimes the process is painful and hard. And as human beings, it's sometimes hard for us to embrace that truth, but it is true. When God seems silent, it is because he has already answered our prayer. Sometimes we are so distracted in our pursuits that we don't hear nor see his answers. And when God says yes, it's because you deserve it. When he says no, it's because you deserve better. And when he says, not now, it's because the best is yet to come. And that's why I embrace, and you too ought to embrace, the promise recorded in Romans 8, 28. You know it? If you know it, let's say it together. And we know that all things work together for good. To what? And to them that are the call according to his purposes. Church, whatever God does for his children is well done. Amen. So you can cry, but there's a morning coming. The dead in Christ will rise. Sister Lina, I know you could cry. But Jesus is coming very soon. I told you that a while ago. You'll wipe away all our tears. And there will be joy. Whatever God does for his children is well done. You can't and won't get anything better. Therefore, I want to assure you this afternoon that the almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, our redeemer and soon coming king, will certainly do something about death in his own perfect time. God's word assures us that death will not have the last word. Death will not keep us in the grave. Thank God, death too will die. So let's comfort one another with these words of assurance. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for this time that you have allowed me to minister to your children. Cover me with your presence now and fill me with your spirit and take control of this service. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Permit me to engage your attention for a while longer. And I'm sure we're going to get out of here before 3 o'clock. As we explore that topic, extravagant love. Keith was a lover. Extravagant love. Strange topic for a service like this. It actually sounds like a topic for a wedding. But ladies and gentlemen, when you understand and experience God's extravagant love, his goodness and grace, you can't help shouting praises to God and loving him in return. And I tell you, you wouldn't have to be prompted. When we recognize and experience God's love, we wouldn't have to wait for him to ask us to love and give praise. Because nobody could love like Jesus. God loves the unlovable and unlovely. The unqualified and unworthy. That's what he is trying to tell us all this time. But we either don't understand. Or we don't hear. Or we hear and understand. But we just can't care. Because that's what sin is all about. We don't even know what we are doing. 
Mark chapter 2 reflects this extravagant love of God. It tells the story of the paralytic and how his friends brought him to Jesus. And you might be wondering what love got to do with it. But when you know what Jesus did for this man who was paralyzed from birth and by extension what God has done and is doing for each one of us providing, protecting, sustaining us every day of our lives you too will understand, appreciate and embrace this extravagant love that I'm talking about. When you understand that this same Jesus has power not only to feed the hungry but also to heal the sick. Yea, to forgive sins thus ensuring our salvation you will shout glory hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. The fact is ever since Adam and Eve, Eve's decision to go against God's plan for their lives, sin has plagued all of God's creation. And the sin problem, says Paul, is a death problem. We were born dead, dead in trespasses and sins. Ladies and gentlemen, could you imagine our plight if we were created immortal? Everlasting torment, misery and pain would have been our lot. Our lives would have been a living hell. But God who is rich in mercy and with an incredible extravagant love embraced us even when we were dead in sin. God took our sin dead lives and made us live in Christ. If that isn't extravagant love, I don't know what love is. Church, if God didn't do all of that for us when we die, that would have been the end of us. Could you just digest that? I don't want to even imagine that. I have not met one person who really wants to die. Of course, some folks say, they say that, but it has always been said when in the throes of pain and suffering. On the other hand, I have met folk who are dying to experience tender moments of radiant love, spontaneous affection, ignited devotions, explosions of tenderness. I have seen folk who have been impacted by this extravagant love of God. They have been literally transformed and transported from darkness to light and their countenance show it. And that was Keith. Every time I saw him, he was smiling. And I, I thought he was joking, but it was because he was happy. And only God can give that kind of happiness, that joy. Please permit me to indulge you a bit longer and attempt to illustrate, and I, I, I said this story already, but I'm gonna tell it again. You and your spouse had a horrible day at work, and so you came home cranky. Each of you wanted a little sympathy, but neither of you got any. So there you sat at the dinner table, cranky and gloomy, with your daughter, six-year-old Chantel. Chantel folds her hands to pray. And the two of you bow your heads and you listen. God, it is Chantel. How are you? I am fine, thank you. Mom and dad are mad. Have you ever heard prayer like that before? I don't know why we got a house, a new car, toys, plenty of food and each other. Could you get them to stop being mad? Lord, please do. Or it's just going to be you and me having fun tonight. Amen. The prayer is answered before it's finished. You both look up in the middle and smile and say you are sorry. And you both thank God for the voice who reminded you about what really matters. Hello. 
Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family and friends, that's a moment of extravagant, explosive love, reminding us of what really matters. A text message telling us to treasure the treasure we have got while we have got it. And I believe you did that to Keith. A whispered message from an angel or someone who sounds like one reminding you that what you have is greater than what you want. Hello? Or that you should never let the things you want make you forget the things you have. And that which is urgent is not always what matters. Extravagant, explosive love. You have them, I have them, and Jesus had them too. One of them happened when Jesus met the paralytic. The man couldn't walk. His limbs were bent and his body twisted. While others jumped and ran, he labored to bring a spoon to his mouth. While his brothers and sisters spoke and sang, his words slur and slipped. Whether he was born paralyzed or became paralyzed, the end result was the same. Total dependence on others. Someone washed his face and bathed his body. Yes, he needed a new body, but only God could restore what tragedy and sin has robbed. So one day, word went out that a carpenter turned teacher turned wonder worker was in town. And you know how you respond to that. Some of you go to what you call the obia man for that, all of that. But he can't even help himself. In fact, you have to pay him, they tell me, because I don't go and will never go. I don't want to say my obia man is God. But the one who sustains me and will sustain you and take care of you under all circumstances is the creator God. You don't have to go to a man when you go, his house is broken down. You don't even have food to eat. How could you go to a man like that? So people came from everywhere. The young with sick babies and broken hearts and the old with pruned faces and toothless mouths. So by the time the paralytic and his friends arrived, the house was full with people jamming the doorways. Are you listening to me? To get to Jesus seemed impossible, but not for these men. And they were determined and resolute, obviously attracted to and captivated and compelled by this extravagant love that they heard about Jesus. Huddling over their friend, they brainstormed. And soon enough, they were climbing to the top of the house. They cut through the roof and lowered their friends down with their scarves right where Jesus was ministering. Ladies and gentlemen, faith does things like that. Hello? Faith does the unorthodox. That's why Keith was a man of faith. The unexpected. And faith got Jesus' attention. Mark says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man on the mat, Young man, your sins are forgiven you. Are you listening to me? Jesus was moved by the faith of these four men. And we are privileged to witness a divine moment of extravagant love. And the friends of the paralytic expected Jesus to say, I heal you, arise, take up your bed and walk. Instead, Jesus says, I forgive you. Some of you will be disappointed, huh? Because you don't like to forgive. You recoil from forgiving. But Jesus said, I forgive you. But if you know anything about Jesus, you will know that Jesus wouldn't settle for a simple healing of the body. He wanted to heal the soul. So he bypassed the physical and deals with the spiritual. Friends, to heal the body is temporal. But to heal the soul is eternal. The friends of the paralytic 
wanted Jesus to give their friend a new body so he could walk again. But Jesus gives grace so that he can live. Friends, God gives us what we need and not simply that for which we ask or want. We serve a wise and living God. I'm tempted to tell you a story. I don't know if my wife is listening, but I remember going to the hospital to pray for a young lady who was a member of my district. I wouldn't tell you which district. They had cut off her both legs. She was suffering from diabetes and she was dying. She said, Pastor, please pray for me. And before I pray for people, I, I have a conversation. So I say, sometimes God tells us, or he heals us immediately. Doesn't even have to talk to us. He just says the word maybe, whatever he does. And there are other times he says, I'm going to work with you because you need working with. And there are other times he says, my grace is sufficient for you. I said, which one would you choose? And she said, pastor, I want to live. I said, let me tell you something. If I am lying where you are lying and the pastor asked me that question, I'm going to say, I'm going to choose my grace is sufficient. And eventually she changed her story and she said, yes, pastor, my grace, I will choose. My grace is sufficient. She died that very night. And I did that on a second occasion. And when I got home, my wife says, don't go back and pray that kind of prayer. <laughs> but I said, that's the prayer that we need to pray. Because God's grace is sufficient. He knows what is best for you. That's why I will always choose God's grace. Hello, are you? Listen to me here. Who among us would have asked God for what he gives? Which one of us would have dared to ask God, would you please hang yourself on a cross as a substitute for every sin I've committed and will commit the Lord after you have given me and Lord after you have given me could you prepare a place in your house so that I could live forever how many of us would ask like those four friends we may have asked for the small stuff long life a healthy body a good job lots of money a pretty wife, a handsome, rich husband. Hello? From my perspective, it's accepting a teeter when he offers a BMW or Mercedes Benz. Are you listening to me here? Jesus, more than anything else, wanted to give us the gift of everlasting life. That's why he died, so that whosoever believes in him shall not what perish but have everlasting life read it in john 3 16 family our god is faithful he always keeps his promises god is not willing that any one of us should perish but that all come to repentance read it in second peter 3 9 so even though the paralytic did not know nor had the wear it all to ask for what he needed jesus gave it anyhow Jesus gives and forgives. We can give without loving, but we can't love without giving. God is love. That's why he gave. He gives and gives and will continue giving. If you don't give, it's not that you don't have a giving problem. It's that you have a loving problem. But listen to this church. In spite of all that loving and giving, the Pharisees were indignant who can forgive sins but God they grumbled Mark 2 7 friends God was in their midst and they didn't recognize it I wouldn't say amen to that a 
And their grumbling triggered one of Jesus' greatest questions. Hear what he asked. Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven? Or to tell him, stand up, take up your bed and walk? That's Jesus' question. Which do you think is easier for Jesus, my friend? To forgive your soul or heal your body? Think about it carefully. Which do you think caused Jesus more pain? Providing this, this man with health or providing him heaven? Ladies and gentlemen, to heal the man's body took a simple command. To forgive the man's sin took Jesus' blood. One took a word, the other took his body. One took a moment, the other took his life. Are you with me here? But Jesus' love for this crew of faith was so strong that he went away. He went beyond their appeal and went straight to the cross. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. If Jesus didn't go to the cross, none of us, when we die, will live again. Jesus already knew the cause of grace. He certainly knew the price of forgiveness. But he offered it anyhow. My brothers and sisters, family and friends, when we take a step of faith, God sees. The same face that beamed to the paralytic back then beams at the alcoholic, the adulterer, the thief today. He wants to transform you. Friends, God hears the sinner who confesses his sin. And turns from it. The Bible tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that good news? Isn't that extravagant love? Then I don't know what love is. If it's not. Those same lips that spoke to the man in Capernaum. Is speaking to every man, woman and child. Right here and right now. To those who dare come into his presence and ask for his help. This afternoon, I want to ask you the question. Do you want Jesus to forgive you? Do you want him to heal your soul and make you whole? The answer to this question will certainly make the difference between eternal life and eternal death. If you receive Christ as your savior from sin and you die, you will be resurrected in the first resurrection at which time you shall be changed. The Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Praise the Lord. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? I told you, my brothers and sisters and friends, family and friends, death can't keep us in the grave. Nor does he have the last say. So death will not keep Keith in the grave. Hello? Oh no. Jesus does. Because he has all power. He is indeed the resurrection and the life. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Uh, because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living. Say it again. And life is worth the living, family. Because he lives. You can go to God right now. And ask him for forgiveness. And tell him that you want him to save you. And he will. That's why he died. We ought to give thanks and praises to God. Who gives us the victory through our Lord. And Savior Jesus Christ. Let us therefore be faithful to God who loves extravagantly. And he will give again. This time 
a crown of life. Do you want that crown that sits on King Charles's head? Or do you want a crown of life where we will live forever in that place where we'll never die? That's the one, of course. If you want that life, say I. The eyes have it. May God comfort, bless, and keep you until he comes in glory to take us home. God bless. Okay, um, we had scheduled a special early up in the evening, and the person came in after so we would allow her to come and share that lovely voice with us at this time, Sister Michelle. And while she's coming, it is pretty obvious to us, the Palatavia family and uh, the Osborne family, that our pastor, our resident pastor, is not with us. But because of technology, he expresses his sorrow for not being here, and he wants you to know that he sends his condolences on behalf of his family. But the unique thing about him, he's on the verge of an extension of his family. So he's on the edge. So he can't separate at this time from his wife because he's looking forward to that extended family that should be appearing at any time. So I, I know we understand that part of what that's all about, all right? But he wants you to know that his heart is here with you and he extends his condolences well to all of us because at Palatavir, Nelson said, all of we is one family. Right. Good evening, church. Amazing grace shall always be my songs of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty
We praise the Lord for that powerful message by Pastor Edwards and for that beautiful song. We want to invite the family members to press to the front at this time as we have the prayer of comfort. We need to stand by each other and to support each other. And even as we stand and come forward, we will sing the song, Bind Us Together, Bind Us Together with Chords That Cannot Be Broken. In times like these, we need each other. So family members, siblings, cousins, nieces, nephews, in-laws, as the case might be, we press to the front at this time. moment we ask for your strength for your peace and for your guidance dear God for the family members dear God we ask that you continue to be the one to not just heal them physically but also spiritually dear God that you continue to be the one to give them a sense of hope for even in your word you said what let not your heart be troubled Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again. And Father Lord, we look forward with hope towards that day, because on that day, we believe and we trust their God that it was well with Keith's life and his relationship with you. And Lord, because we are alive and remain, we could all ensure that it is well with our souls. So Father Lord, that is the greatest comfort and the greatest hope we can have that we individually can be ready for your soon return so far lord as we seek to live to be ready i pray that your holy spirit will continue to guide us there god as we seek to be our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper i pray that you help us there lord so that we can be loving and kind as we seek to bring a smile to someone's face as keith did and to even lighten the atmosphere there god i pray that you help us so that we can give every day our best effort knowing that when we do it unto you dear god it will be well done so father lord bless someone this day with strength bless someone today with the determination to go forward the children would have lost their father their god in the name of jesus you be their heavenly father for the others, their Lord, a close friend, a relative, their Lord, you be that one that they could cast all their cares upon. And Father Lord, more than all of these, we pray that when you come there, God, it would be well with our souls. And we would be a part of that grand reunion day when we would see you, dear God, and all our loved ones that would have laid down the burdens of this life. Keep us faithful until then, dear God, and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Give someone a hug as you go back to your seat. Bunch of, bunch of us family. May God continue to richly bless all of you.
going to do a closing song at this time. It's number 449 in the hymnal. And there is a land of pure delight where bliss eternal reign. Infinite days exclude the night and pleasures banish pain. 449. We'll all stand as we sing this song. Let us stand, please. for the benediction. Father in heaven, it was brought us here today to remind us of your extravagant love. And we thank thee for having sent such a message to us through thy servant, Pastor Edwards. And as we leave this place, we pray that thou wilt go with us and help us ever to feel this love surrounding us. And help us ever to live in the reality of the hope that we will see our loved ones again once they have died in thee. 
Oh, yes. So dismiss us now with thy blessing and allow us to bask in thy presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. How far from home I am, Jesus? I bent myself. The watchman spent the long dark night is almost gone. The morning soon will break. And we no more must speed thy flight with props bright and
He's solid, he's solid. Hey, I'm gonna make sure you die just fast yeah. enough. You look at me. Hello? Yeah. Die just fast enough? We started at 529. Yeah. We started at 529 and then we all, we all take over. <laughs> My sister. My sister, she didn't hear me. I said, we start on 529 and all the take over after. You're the singer. <laughs> hey! Come on, I'm like, you can recognize you. I go the way, alright? Alright. Okay, my brothers and sisters, we can press closer. The body's here, so we're gonna start with number 529. 529. Under his wings I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me and I am his child. I have I have help this evening with all these sing song words there, so I don't have to strain my voice. <coughs> Go ahead, my sister. Still I can trust him. I know he'll keep me. He has redeemed me. And I am his child. Under his wings. Under his wings. Under his wings. Who from his love can save. John 14, 1 to 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. That's a blessed hope. That's the promise that God has left for us. So let's, let's just embrace it. All right, we will pray at this time. Brother Osman will pray for us. Elder Osman, go right ahead. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are thank you for the great comforter. For you have said that, comfort ye my people, comfort ye my people. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that you have granted us. We are with dear God, even though we are bereaved, you are still the one who give us the hope of eternal life. And as we may weep today, 
but we know that joy will come in the morning oh, yeah. as we rest our loving brother in the dust. We know that one day if we are faithful, we are going to see him again. So I pray that you would be with us all here this evening, that you would comfort us and that your Holy Spirit would have your divine way. Guide and direct and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can put down. Where is the under? Yeah. Just put down for us, please. For well, as much as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our dear brother Keith Osmond to fall asleep in Christ, we do lovingly commit his body to the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, recognizing that all the issues of life are in his hands and that he has promised eternal life to those who love him and put his trust in him. Let's sing. Shall we gather at the river where right in the feet of God with a new Christian type of Everybody, yes, we are down the right of the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with us, gather with the sins of the river that goes by the Here we reach the shining river. Let's go. Here <laughs> we reach the shining river. Soon a pilgrimage will see. Soon a happy heart will be With the melody of peace. Oh, yes, we'll gather. Yes, we will gather at the river. Beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the sky. with the sins. Oh, 
Open now the crystal fountain. Open now the crystal fountain. When the healing let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all. Strong deliver, come on. Strong deliver, strong deliver. Be God still, my strength and shield. My strength and shield, strong deliver. Ever give to give. Oh, songs of praise, songs of praise. I will ever give to give. The day morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come. Cease the tide. The and the trumpet sound. And the trumpet sound. Oh, we see. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning. Yes, in through this night of blue. Oh, we see. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning. That we attended by all. Attended by all the shining Down the flaming sky Down the flaming sky The judge will come and take his people The judge will come and will take his people Where they will not die Where they will not die Oh, we see Oh, we see the dreams of the golden morning The tears of those who are broken hearted shall be wiped away. Oh, we see the dreams of the golden morning. Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Heal 
thy wounded, broken spirit. Save me by thy grace. Save me by thy grace. Oh, Savior, Savior, Savior. Would you do service for 
Thirty-three, six, thirty-three. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wonders love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace in the mansion. In the mansion, bright and blessed, and He'll prepare for us a place. Pathway. While we walk the pilgrim's path, clouds, clouds will overspread the sun. When traveling days are over, when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sound. Oh, when we all get to heaven, oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. For us, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be. Soon the pearly gates will open. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. Oh, when we all. Three forty one. Three forty one. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So long be the world that he gave us. Who yielded his life on atonement? Who yielded his life on atonement for sin? Promise of God. Every believer, the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes. That moment from Jesus, a pardon received. That moment from Jesus, 
abide and receive. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Welcome to the Father, to Jesus the Son. And give him the glory. And great things he has done. Number 449. 449. What's that, and we're not going to be singing it as we sang it in the What's church. That, All right. There is a land of pure delight where bliss is to Infinite day excludes the night. Let's sing. Infinite day excludes the night. And pleasures banish pain. And pleasures banish pain. Yes, Come on, let's go. For we are traveling to Everlasting spring of life. The never withering flowers. And but a little space divide. But a little space divide. This heavenly land from our way. We are traveling. Come on. We are traveling to To bring the wreath on, bring the wreath now, and we'll sing that last stanza while you're fixing it on the grave. Bring the wreath, all the wreath. Beautiful. All right. All right. Go right ahead, sister, with that last stanza. Where and view the landscape, or and view the landscape, or. Soon 
Sing number six through right. two, yes. But before we sing that one, we're gonna just have the closing prayer by Brother Barton, Elder Barton. You can come forward, pray that prayer for us, and then we will sing that closing thing. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us during the celebration of the life of our dear brother. Yes, Lord. We pray and ask, oh God, that you will stay with us, even those of us that may be leaving for various destinations. Okay. We pray, oh God, that you will stay with us and take us safely. And even more than that, we pray, oh God, that your arms of comfort will stay around us and help us to come to terms with the fact that our brother is asleep. Oh, yeah. We pray as one unit looking after each other and being drawn closer to your coming. We thank Amen. you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I just want to thank all of you who have come to support the family and to comfort and share. We also want to thank the engineers for such a beautiful job done. Yes. Can you see this? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well done. Well, and well. in good time, too. Yes. I want to thank them for that. All right, so we'll sing number six, what? My heart six, six. Six three two. Let's go. My, My heart can sing when I pause to remember. Heart is here. Heart is here. Is but a stepping stone. Along the trail that's winding all round. Along the trail that's winding all round. This travel world is not my final home. But until then, let's sing it. But until then, my heart will go and sing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day, I will behold the city. Until the day God calls me home. Until the day, God calls me home. The will dim and look. The faith will demand to lose their value. If we recall, they borrowed. If borrow. we recall, for a while. And things of earth that caused my heart to tremble. Remember, 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 remember them, they only bring, they only bring a smile. But until then, everybody. But until then.
May God bless all of you. Get home safely. Thank you.